Piggybacking off the Summer Commodities Conference, County Farm Bureau presidents and board members assembled in Natchez, Mississippi a day early to hear from Federation staff and experts about keeping the county offices running smoothly. It's good to hear according to the men and women in this room, but it's also good to catch up with other members from across the state. You can't ever learn too much. The Farm Bureau and the Extension Service and things, you know, they do so much to help us and uh, I think when they have something to say, you know, you ought to take time to listen. We discuss what has gone on within our county. Some has great ideals for handling them. We can incorporate that in other counties and uh, take care of the problems that arise. We want to uh, get them all together, talk about what's happening in their counties, let them spread the good words about what they're doing right. Uh, get other county farm bureaus involved with some of the things that they're doing. Uh, also talk about some of the issues that we might be having. While this meeting is focusing on the internal workings of the County Farm Bureau, the membership couldn't help but focus on some of the outside issues farmers are facing across Mississippi and the nation. There are still many unanswered questions when it comes to trade and tariffs, rural broadband, the 2018 Farm Bill, and roads and bridges in the state all potentially affecting a farmer's bottom line. We are worried about trade and, and the broadband. We have a big problem with our uh, with the county on the uh, bridges, the roads and bridges. So that's what we're, we have about, uh, we have uh, 11 bridges out now and we're trying to get some you know money from the state to uh, help rebuild them. And I'm actually a county supervisor with the county too. So well, that's what we're, that's one of our main problems. We have abalorum tax issues, we have pollution issues, and you keep seeing the same issues cropping up. Luckily, we work with other commodity groups, the Cattlemen Association, the Forestry Association, the Soybean Council, but when we come together as a group, we're a lot more uh, valid. Just this year, nearly 200 bridges were closed due to weight restrictions or disrepair. Here's what that means to farmers who need to get commodities to the buyer, or to port along the coast or Mississippi River. Your deliveries are later getting there and slower getting back. And uh, of course, and then you possibly could be in line longer at the elevators. Uh, I understand there was a, actually a gen that had a bridge on each side and actually neither one of them met weight specifications, but but uh, soon they worked that out. But it's, uh, but that was, that was, you don't realize how important that is till it happens. Mississippi House of Representatives Speaker Philip Gunn made an impromptu visit and expressed to members his willingness to find funding for improving roads and bridges across the state, even talking about two specific possibilities for funding. Still, nothing is a done deal. But the one consolation in all of this is the Mississippi Farm Bureau working with state leaders to hopefully find a solution to getting these issues settled in a way beneficial to Farm Bureau membership. A lot of them don't understand the farming industry, but if you tell them we're having a problem, well, then they can fix it. But if they don't know the problem, uh, they can't fix it. So, I, yes, I am proud that Mike works close with all of our elected officials. I work close with them. If I have a problem, I call them. We sit down, we talk. And just like a farmer has to wait for his crop, the Mississippi agriculture community waits to see what happens next in Washington and in Jackson. Waiting, you know, that part is is always a problem, but as a farmer, you kind of get used to waiting. I mean, you wait all year to find out whether you're going to make anything or not, so you kind of get used to it, you know, because nothing ever happens fast, you know, in agriculture.